Hey guys, World Eater here. Today we're going to be going over another familiar that I believe is very, very strong in the bait class. And that familiar is going to be... Oladis. So, Oladis is strong for a lot of reasons. One, because they have a lot of evade chance right off the bat. They come with 30 base evade chance, which is extreme. That's an amazing amount of evade chance. That's without putting any other pumps on him. They also come with 5% air resistance, which is okay. Um, they have a decent amount of speed, so they do get some turns in, which is nice for this familiar, and I'll go ahead and tell you why. But first, let's get on with the build. I always recommend nothing but evade chance. I don't recommend damage reduction, only evade chance. Um, you could put, perhaps, um, empower chance for a more... Uh, PvP style lattice, but I always recommend Evade Chance. Evade Chance is great. With Mythic Augments, you can get an extra 45 Evade Chance to add on to that 30, which will cap you out at 75. Now, if you don't have the Evade Mythic pumps, you can always use a Legendary Pump. And the perfect a Legendary Pump will cap out to 12%, which is still very, very close. You'll just be missing 3% each pump, which does add up, but it's honestly still a good, it's still good to use legendary pumps if that's all you got. A lattice still shines regardless, but of course you're going to want to try to get as close to max as possible with these pumps. Let's go ahead and go on to the chips. For the chip, I love heal power. Heal power is extremely good, which is why I like that they have some speed, because in the skills I'll go ahead and show you right now, that heal power works tremendously well. You could use any damage reduction chip. You can also use any chip that gives you extra damage or empower chance, anything like that. Any chip will go good on this familiar, to be honest, um, but I highly recommend heal power. Heal power is extremely amazing, especially whenever you're trying to do manual content where you have to take control of a lattice and actually use his abilities. Heal power comes in clutch so many times. I can't tell you how many times I used this familiar with this chip and this exact setup on him, and it got me through D4s. I believe a lattice was the reason I cleared the um, Ascaria main hand D4. Um, a lattice helped me big time. So, props to a lattice. Let's go and go on to the brain. I always, always recommend you put when you get hit brain on any bait or tank familiar regardless unless there is a very very high speed that's higher than their damage output so since their speed is lower than their damage output i still recommend when you get hit especially because the higher tier you get the faster familiars and players tend to be they, t they tend to be leaning towards more speed than damage nowadays in the higher tiers so when you get hit it's almost always going to be the best thing on him I would recommend maybe a per turn if you don't have a when you get hit otherwise, but you will want a when you get hit brain on them. You can use a defensive brain, you can use a offensive brain. I personally prefer to use an offensive brain. My favorite brain on a lattice is attack strongest enemy when you get hit or attack team when you get hit because it lets you pretty much deal some damage back. and. It's very amazing because when you evade something, you take zero damage from that enemy. So you're going to be getting attacks in for free because of your enemy. So it's a very, very nice way of using a lattice. A defensive offensive type of familiar, very hybrid style since they do have a good amount of speed. This is a very good brain to put on them. Now, of course, you can use rares, epics, or legendaries, even commons if that's all you have. But the higher chance, the better. I would say if you have any pumps that are legendary or lower, you might want to lean towards a defensive brain. Legendary, you could still fit in an offensive brain, but if you have epic pumps, you might be a little low on evade chance, and I would put better, um, I would suit, I would probably put a defensive brain on him if you have any epic pumps or lower, because you will be needing that evade chance to be able to take advantage of these attack, strongest attack team type brains when you get hit. Otherwise, you might be blowing up a little too fast. Do you need it? No, you could still make use of an attack brain with lower evade, but it is riskier if you're trying to do harder content. So just keep that in mind. Just about any when you get hit brain is good on a lattice, but I highly recommend a defensive brain if you have epic pumps or lower on a lattice. Now, let's go ahead and go on to the bone. I always recommend while below 
25% health, heals received are 90% more effective. Now you have to remember, a lattice is not like Lars. If a lattice takes too many hits and they aren't evaded, he dies. So a redirect bone on him is very, very risky. The only time you would want that is if you're doing an lattice sandwich, which would be an lattice up front, you in the middle, and another lattice. I highly recommend against doing that only because it's a vague chance and not damage reduction. It's still very good to use. 75% chance of course or 70% or higher will be perfect and ideal, but anything lower than that is very scary. Can you do it? Of course you can. You know, it's not going to like make or break anything. You could probably get away with like 65, 60% chance, but I still think this while below 25% health heals received are 90% more effective. Now this setup is my setup for D4s. Um, the exact setup you see here, this is what I use in Ancient Dungeons. I will swap it out for other things that I see necessary for other type builds. I will always keep um, these main core things, but I will swap the brain on average depending on the content. But I tend to keep it like this all the time. If you want to do PvP and be a little more aggressive and this is the only familiar you really have, you could switch these two in power, um, but that really is all on you. But that's going to be the build for a lattice. Let's go ahead and get onto the skills. So for their first ability, the Zero SP has a spread heal teammates, which is very, very nice. You're going to be swapping back and forth depending on what you need. Like if you have a blink on your team, you're not really going to take too much advantage of the spread shield. You're only going to use it to give her shields. Um, but you're going to mostly be doing spread heal or spread shield depending on what your team uses. This is going to be your main kit, these two right here. You don't really need to use a uh, rain from random enemy. It's not too useful. It looks cool, but you'll be better off doing these abilities. This would probably be if you really want to self-sustain because it does drain and give you a little more heals, I believe. Um, this one's nice if you just need to deal some damage and it's a lattice's turn. You don't want to take any more damage. It's only one SP. Now this one right here is the most useless attack in their arsenal, but it does do the most damage. You're not going to be relying on this ability too much, but if you have the chance to use it and it is your only option, it's not bad. Like, look at the damage. 52,000 to 121,000 for my stats, of course. That's amazing. That's really good. But it's a niche scenario thing. You're only going to use this if you really have to deal damage back as a lattice. Most of the time, you're going to be kind of like this hybrid healer bait type of deal where you're just going to be healing, 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 healing with your slight amount of speed, which isn't too bad. This is a very good familiar if you feel like you need a little more heals in your team, but you don't want to sacrifice anything else. I highly recommend a lattice if you're finding problems clearing certain areas due to the lack of heals. Sometimes you just can't replace a DPS familiar for a healing familiar because you won't do enough damage. And the reason why I like a lattice is because, again, you can pair up a DPS brain, which is very, very nice. You know, you can do an offensive brain and get away with it. So they're a very nice hybrid. This familiar sometimes is slept on. Believe it or not, a lot of top players still do not have a lattice and are barely farming them today. I know at least four people that didn't know about a lattice until I showed them, and they're in tier 18 plus. So keep an eye out for a lattice. I'll go ahead and show you where you get them right now. Let's go ahead and check out their schematic. So the schematic, let's start off at the end. It's going to be the cheapest. It's going to be 100k gold per Aladdis. You're also going to need 100 Vitos, and I'll go ahead and show you where to get that right now. The Vitos are going to be in this raid over here, which is going to be Minions of Taranus. Taranus? However you say it. Go ahead and summon it. You're always going to want to do um, pretty much the highest if you can. That way you can take advantage of all these other bonuses. It doesn't really matter. For what you're going for right now, because what you're going for, yeah, actually the schematic here, the schematic here is too as well. So you can take advantage of getting the schematic here, but you can also get it in the flags, which I'll show you right now. What you're mainly going for here is going to be vetoes, vetoes right here. It's a rare drop, but it is a material used for familiars, and I don't believe I don't find effects vetoes. So that's unfortunate, but it is a rare, so it drops very very often i'd say you'd probably get a few every now and then like every raid i think you'll get like it's kind of hard to tell but it's pretty easy to get due to the fact that it's rare so it might take a while because you do need a lot as you can see over here when we go back to the schematic 
you will see that you need a hundred so it does take a while but don't be scared because a lattice is well well worth it in my opinion a lattice is their own being they're not really a glars replacement are they a great glars replacement they can be but again they are more of a hybrid class which i like so they're worth it on their own do i recommend you go back and farm this content yes i do honestly for a lattice i would recommend going back for this content whether you are a free to play or a pay to play just depending on how fast you're trying to do things as a free to play at least um, I really do strongly advise going for a lattice, but here is going to be one thing that might bother you. You will need some raid familiars. The good thing is this raid familiar is from that raid, so that's great. You're going to be able to take advantage of that capture rate. Luminous is going to be at that raid. I'll go ahead and show you one more time. You'll see here, minions of Terranus, and you're going to take advantage of that 100% capture rate on Heroic. So. Luminous is not too bad. I always get a Luminous offering all the time, but it's RNG. Do I recommend you bribe this familiar or use gold? Honestly, that is on you. You're going to be running a lot anyways to be getting these vetoes. You could run gold, and if by the time you don't have enough um, Luminous and you're around, let's say, 400, 500 vetoes, then maybe you might want to start bribing Luminous. So I personally think bribing Epic Familiars in Raid is fine. I don't see anything against it because they are harder to come across and the energy type is more scarce than um, energy itself shards do come a lot slower so do i recommend bribing this yes i do highly recommend it as a free to play or pay to play do you have to no again if you're around 400 or 500 vetoes and you're close to that 600 700 mark that you're going for then you can start bribing i recommend just saving as much gems as you can until you get towards the end of your lattice farm to decide on that but let's go ahead and go on to the last part of the farm, which is going to be Mistral. Now, Mistral is super, super easy to farm. You can go ahead and click on this over here, and you'll see that they're at the Obelisk of Mistral. Let's go ahead and show you where that is. The Obelisk of Mistral, if you click on Quest up here, is going to be in Melvin's Genesis. It's going to be the last one right here. So we're going to click on this one. We're going to see here the Obelisk of Mistral. We're going to click on the treasure chest down here. As you can see, you can get the Alada Schematic here, which is where most people will get it because they're going to be farming this a lot more often than the other raid. And then you can also see that if we go over any any item really that is tier 11. So it is going to be in the tier 11 zone, Melvin's Genesis, at the Obelisk of Mistral. You're always going to want to take advantage of the heroic capture rate. Try not to do anything else. If you are stuck only doing this, try to find someone on the world chat anywhere on Discord to add you as a friend that may be a little stronger so you can go ahead and do that heroic because trust me, it's always worth it to do heroic. So that's pretty much going to be it with a lattice. Where do I recommend you use him? I highly recommend you use him in PvP if he's kind of all you got. He's a very strong PvP. Um, familiar but again he is a bait so he does get destroyed by pets depending on what tier you're in i'd say in the mid range earlier game maybe all the way up to tier 15 16 ish he shines in pvp very very well um, he's great in anything you can use familiars and honestly he's great in quests he's great in d4s he's great in invasion he's great in trials gauntlet he's even good in raid if you have to use him in raid so it's a very very solid familiar I highly, highly recommend crafting this familiar. Are they a full replacement for Glarsdos? No. Can they be? Of course. Can they be a healer on their own? Maybe, depending on the content, but you gotta remember they're not as fast as other familiars. So that's pretty much going to be the rundown on a lattice. If you guys want a deeper dive in any familiars that I've been going over, please leave them in the comments below. I'll go ahead and see what I can do about that. I know some people said they want a few um, more tips on certain familiars that I've gone over. If you have any other ideas or any familiars you want me to go over, leave them in the comments as well. If you guys have any tips for other viewers, please leave them down there. I know they'll appreciate it. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Eater. Have a great one. Peace.